Hi there, this is Colin Rennie here, and welcome to another video on the basics of Rhino. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you a little bit of detail about booleans and some of the problems that you can encounter when you boolean objects together and then fillet them, which is something that happens a fair amount in Rhino. Um, so what I'm going to do first is to create some extrusions, and then I'm going to um, boolean them together, fillet them, and I'll show you some of the problems that can occur and some of the fixes that you can use to repair them. So I'm going to start, I'm going to work predominantly in the perspective view, um, which, uh, which is a slightly new way of working for some of you, but I'll show you some tricks that you can use in order to, uh, in order to work effectively in perspective. Um, I'm going to start making some uh, polylines in order to, some closed polylines in order to extrude those up. So I'm going to make a uh, kind of pentagonal um, polyline here. Uh, and then I'm going to extrude that one vertically here. So there's a number of ways you can you can get to that tool. But you can go solid, extrude plane curve straight, and that will do it. Uh, or you can go to the solid tools, and you can choose the tool which is extrude surface, so extrude plane curve here, um, and that will uh, well, that extrude those up. Now I also want to extrude another surface on the top of this. So I want to create another surface or another pl another curve on the top of this, and then extrude that one vertically upwards. So I'm going to go back to uh, my polyline tool. I want to pick up a point on the surface here. Now, one of the issues I have is if I want to start on a on a on a point, um, it can be a little bit tricky uh, when you're trying to pick up a point here. You can, one of the ways of doing it is to uh, start on an end point, and then if you're in planar mode, which I am then the next point that you pick will be on the same plane as the first point until you click on something else and that will jump down to uh, to that next point. Uh, there is another way though of picking points on a plane or on a surface. Uh, you can you can actually pick them up when you're working in uh, when you have a command open, so start a polyline, it's asking for a point. If I want to pick up a point on a surface I can hover over my snaps and hold my control key down and then a new set of snaps appear. One of those is on curve, one is on surface. I'm going to choose on surface and it asks me for the surface that I want to, to, to work with and that one is going to be this top surface here. Okay, now it's the surface that you are facing, right? Uh, not the surface through, um, it, it assumes that it's the first thing that it hits. So this is the surface here that I'm going to, I want to stick on. It only works once and now I'm into the original snaps that I'm working with. So I'm going to choose mid here, and choose end, I'm going to choose mid again and I'm going to go over here and do um, a mid and then I'll finish that line off there. So I have a, another five-sided uh, shape and I'm going to extrude that one vertically. So I'll go to solid tools, um, extrude straight, this is the curve I want to extrude, straight up like that and now I have two extrusions, one on top of the other. And I'm going to use those to boolean together. So I can, um, when I boolean, I'm deleting the information in between these two objects. Uh, so if I wanted to, I could do that manually by selecting the objects, exploding them, deleting the base of this one, for example, which is that piece there. I could delete that piece there. Then I could use the edge of these objects to trim away the middle of this, but that's obviously going to take a long time. It's far quicker just to boolean these two things together. So I'm going to boolean union these, and when I do that, you'll see that the Isaac curves appear on the surfaces, meaning that it has gone through an explosion uh, tool, it's trimmed away the, uh, the, the residual um, or the intersecting surfaces or the coplanar surfaces and then it's uh, rejoined all those surfaces back up together to form one closed polysurface which has a volume. So I can say analyze volume mass properties um, volume and it's going to give me an amount which is great. So that's printable but it's not filleted. If I want to fillet that I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to go to fillet, variable radius fillet Remember that variable radius fillet and single radius fillet are the same starting point. It's just that you don't add any handles. I'm going to choose one millimeter. Now, from a, a distance, that looks fine until you get close in and you see that, in actual fact, the fillet has failed. It's not produced a fillet here. So if I'm to take that object and then I'll try and find a volume of it, trans or analyze uh, mass properties, volume, it won't do it. Uh, there's no there's no clear volume in there, so that's not worked. There's also a problem over here, so I have three problems here to solve. Now, I can solve two of them fairly quickly. I'm going to undo that. Um, now, one of the reasons why we had, if I redo that for a second, 
um, you can see that this corner here is obviously causing a problem. So there's something wrong with the maths here, something not working. And the reason is that that surface and this surface are two separate surfaces. They're two faces of one, they're two coplanar faces. Um, and they're split along here. Uh, and that can be useful for some other tools, which I'll show you a, a little bit later. But in essence, I don't want those for this operation. I want to get rid of those. So I'll show you how you can do that. You can do it manually. Um, you can do it through the solid tools here. There's extract surface, which is this one here. Oh, it's capillary holes. That's extract surface. You can say extract surface. I want to extract this one here, and this one here, this one here. These are the offending surfaces that I'm selecting. Remember, I'm using the ISA curves and looking through the object so that I don't intersect with any other ISA curves. And I can uh, select those and press enter and then just delete them. And I have this here. Now I can try capping that. It might not work. It might. No, it's not going to do that, so I'd probably have to do it one at a time. I'd have to extract this surface, delete it, this surface, delete it, and then cap. Probably surface to cap, that's that one. I need to join these two with this. Join it together. Then cap. And you can see that it's a bit of a pain. It's created an end cap now, across there. Um, that's, just, that's the uh, polysurface, and, and that will, will have a volume. But we don't really want to be mucking around doing that too much. There's a simpler way of doing that. What I'm actually trying to do is to merge the faces. Um, and there's a tool to do that, which is, uh, which is this one here, Merge Two Coplanar Faces. So I could click that one and say I want to merge that guy. And it will merge those two together. Or I could, if I wanted to, merge all coplanar faces. So I could right click on this tool, select the object, and then right click again to agree it, and it will merge all those two co all those coplanar surfaces. Now if I do a variable radius fillet over the whole object, all the fillets, you'll see that it's created a much better fillet there. Let's actually cap that. It's still a problem over here though, this is still not a volume. Um, still won't hold water because we have this issue here. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'll try capping it, but that hole is not capped um, because it's not planar. So that's not going to work. So we could try another thing, there's a tool called patch which can be sometimes used in these circumstances, so we can try patch. Um, it patches a surface, so we're going to go to surface tools, and uh, where's patch? Where's it gone? Uh, I'll go to standard, I know where it is in standard. Here we are, patch is... Uh, there, there's patch, there we go. Um, select curves, points, and points to, to, to uh, fit the surface through. So I want this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Press enter. Um, surface U spans 10, surface V spans 10, stiffness of 1, Adjust, trans adjust tangency and automatic trim. Um, starting surface. Well, we'll just leave those as, as those for now and we'll say OK. Now, you can see the surface that it's created is not particularly smooth. I'm going to analyze that surface. Transform, analyze um, surface, environment map for this and this. And you'll see that actually what it's tried to do is a little bit messy. It's a bit, it's a bit kinky. It's, it's uh, got a big dent in it. It's not the most attractive surface. Um, so not really what we want to, to achieve. So that's not going to work. So let's try a different tool here. Let's try to create a network from surfaces. Now it's got network surface, uh, network surfaces, uh, which is surface, network surface. Where are we? Surface, network surface. Curve network, there we go. Um, so I want a curve network from this, this, uh, this, this, and this. I'm going to have a problem here. Um, it's trying to, but you can see it's only got four options A, B, C, D. Um, there's not any option to choose the fifth one. I've got five curves to network together. There's a problem with that because it it will try, but it's not managed to do that. It's managed to create some hideous uh, hideous aber aberration. We want something that will create surfaces 
from uh, these things fairly neatly. And we have a problem with that because we have five surfaces. And if you remember right at the beginning, sorry, five edges to that surface, Rhino builds all of its surfaces from a basis of four edges or two directions, a U and a V direction um, across the surface. So it's effectively a rectangle. Um, and then it morphs those rectangles into different shapes. In this case, with our five different edges, we can't do that. We need to work with four edges in order to create that. So we need to create something that's got four edges. So this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, and then this edge. So what happens if we we got five at the moment? What if we what if we drew a line through here and then had four edges here and four edges here? That might work. How do we do that? Because we've got nothing in the middle there. There's no there's nothing to define an edge there. So we need to create some kind of um, structure or a line that goes from one to the other. But in order to do that we need to join this up here. So there's no surface edge to blend to another surface edge. That isn't going to work. We can't, um, we can't, got nothing to, to blend to. We could either, we could blend this surface to this surface, but that would only create a surface going in that direction, or this one to this one in that direction. But we need a line going from one to the other. Um, so we, we need to do that, but there isn't a line there. There's no line in the middle there. There's an Isaac curve, but there's no, and there's no line in the middle there. There's an Isaac curve. Um, you can see an Isaac curve there, you can see an Isaac curve there. Oh, wouldn't it be good if we could use those Isaac curves and blend between them? Well, we can actually extract those Isaac curves from the surface. We can, we can create a curve from the object. Curve from object, extract Isaac curve. There it is, extract Isaac curve. And it says here, select surface for Isaac curve extraction. Well, I want, I want one from the outside. But I don't want it going in whatever direction that is. That happens to be the uh, U direction. I want to toggle it to the V direction. Here we go. I've got a V direction Isaac curve now, and I want that in the int. There we go, and I've got that Isaac curve now, and I want this one as well. So I'm going to do exactly the same command. Select surface for Isaac curve extraction. Not this, that one, but I want the other direction. I'm going to toggle it. I want this one. So there we go. I've got that Isaac curve and that Isaac curve. So I've got two Isaac curves here now, and I can now create a blend between them. So if I want to blend the surface, let's go, I could do, sorry, blend the curve rather, not the surface. Um, I can do uh, curves, standard, set view display, select, and do it curve tools. Uh, here is blend surface, oh that's arc blend. Uh, we've got fillet corners, we've got chamfers. We should have blend surface here. I usually just type in blend surface, can't remember what the command looks like. Fillet curves, chamfer curves, fillet corners, adjustable curve blend or blend curves. Uh, we could go for right click blend curves. That's the curve I want. And that's the other curve I want. And it's created a blend between them. Um, I can undo that. I could create an adjustable blend. Sorry. Adjustable blend, which is this one. So that's this one. And this one. And that gives you handles, which you can then drag and change the curvature. So I might want to do that change my curvature a little bit. Um, and what I'm looking for when I do this is something that kind of resembles the fillet. Now oh, we'll go with that. So I now have a curve that I can work with. Um, the other problem though is that if I I'm going to use the edges, I can use the edges of these curves, but if I'm to use the edge of this size of curve here or of this, of this fillet here, um, I have a problem because that fillet is one edge, it's not split. So I need to extract another Isaac curve or extract the edge of a uh, the edge of a surface and then split that. So I can do that from curve again, curve from objects, uh, extract edge or duplicate edge. Um, this is the edge I want to uh, extract or duplicate. Press enter and now I have that edge um, and that's going to be precisely that edge. I can split that edge into two using the split tool and I'm going to use this curve to split it. So I now have two segments. This this curve segment and I have this curve segment. And that should allow me to create a network. Because network works on four surfaces usually. There are other ways of doing this. You can create, I'll show you a few of them, I'll, I'll, I'll compare them uh, to each other. So we'll go surface, uh, curve network. This to this curve. Enter. Sorry, I didn't do that correctly. Do it again. This, this, 
curve, this curve and this curve, enter. And we've got tangency here, won't let me do continuity, I could change those to, to position. I've only got position on D, C and D, so C there and D there, I only have position. Um, because we haven't got a blend from this one, but because it's going from tangency here to a blend here, so it doesn't know what to do there. But we'll, we'll work with that, that should be okay. Now that's one way of doing it, but there's also surface some three or four edge curves. We can use that, that works in uh, three dimensions as well. So this one was um, in here, it is this one. Surface some two, three or four edge curves. So I can do this one, this one, this one, and this one. And it will create a surface from those edge curves. Now we can have a look at those under the surface analysis tools and see if there's any difference between them. We can initially see one has a lot more isocurves than the other. This one has less isocurves, this one has more. The first thing we're going to do though is just to find out whether or not if we join these together, if they're accurate. Um, we didn't like the uh, we didn't like the bulge that we were left with with the uh, with the patch. But anyway, let's just join all these surfaces together. So it's in one closed polysurface, which is a good sign. But let's see if we have a volume. If I go to analyze mass properties, mass properties volume, I have a volume, which means I have a closed polysurface for sure, which is great. That will print. Now let's look at this under the analysis. So we go to tools, sorry, analyze surface environment map, for example. And in there you can see that probably the curve on the left is slightly better than the one on the right. Both are acceptable and when you're talking about uh, 3D printing these you're not really going to be able to see that particularly much. Um, it's a fairly, fairly good solution for now. We could probably get better than that with a little bit more fine articulation of these, but for now that will do. I'm going to leave it there, get rid of the environment map. Um, so either of these two functions will work, surface from 3 or 3 edge curve or um, uh, network surface um, or surface curve network um, will create a patch that will be accurate to the corners rather than that goofy patch that we had before that didn't really know which way to take it and ended up with a big bumpy surface. By splitting the curves up or splitting it into sections that were essentially morphed rectangles, we can uh, create smoother geometry than we had with the patch. Okay, uh, so that I think concludes it. We now have a solid that we can work with. We've bl blended some surfaces together um, on e these sides here and we've managed to resolve this little annoying corner here. Uh, not particularly brilliantly, but it will do for now um, for our level that we're working to in basic levels. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, take care for now. See you soon.